While we're half a world removed from the war in the Middle East, we're occasionally reminded of its horrific realities when we hear a news report of dead or wounded U.S. soldiers. Beyond that, though, there may as well not even be a war going on. The media ignores it, our political leaders ignore it, and so we ignore it. But those who live in the war-torn regions, they know the grim nature of this conflict can't be ignored. One of those results and the grim reality associated with it is now being reported in Pakistan, where the U.S. war effort in Afghanistan is spilling across the border and destabilizing the culture and the government of the Pakistani people. According to a report by the Edhai Foundation, infanticide in that country is on the rise. There were more than 1,000 cases of infanticide in Pakistan. This is killing children up from each previous year since the war in Afghanistan started. As the Taliban streams across the Afghan border into Pakistan to set up shop, so too do their radical abuses of human rights and a wave of economic deprivation that leads to women abandoning or killing their newborn babies. While Obama touted progress last month in his rather narrow military outlook, others in the region, such as the Red Cross, who are unconcerned with war strategy and more concerned with humanitarian issues, rebutted the White House. In a rare press conference last month, the, the Red Cross warned that the conditions in Afghanistan today are the worst in the last 30 years. And the numbers coming out of Pakistan regarding infanticide point to that same conclusion. When President Bush hurled our nation into war in the Middle East, he opened up the gates of hell. And in doing so, he failed to accomplish any of the objectives that he publicly set out at the beginning of his presidency. Terrorism, violence, and anti-American sentiments are now actually on the rise and far more prevalent than any time preceding 9-11. There is no success in this war. But wars that defy logic are not uncommon in a nation that no longer bases its foreign policy on what's best for itself in the world, a nation taken over by the same military-industrial complex that President Eisenhower warned us about exactly 50 years ago today. As long as profits for bomb makers, jet builders, and tank manufacturers are up, then the war is going swimmingly. That's despite the U.S. deaths that we know about and the humanitarian crises like rampant infanticides that we generally don't know about. So who can we turn to get us out of this war? Last week, an attorney with the Department of Defense, Jay Johnson, said that Martin Luther King would have approved of our wars in the Middle East. Jay Johnson did not know Martin Luther King. And unfortunately, as King's death rescinds deeper and deeper into history, his message is distorted by those who wish to use King to fulfill their own agendas. Princeton professor Cornell West recently said that Martin Luther King has undergone a Santa Clausification in America today a remaking of his image that paints King as a harmless cartoon character, a kumbaya character. He was just a fluffy idealist committed to equal rights and racial harmony. In reality, King was considered to be the most, by the FBI, to be one of the most dangerous men in America. Why? Because he stood up to the establishment, and he had an army of supporters who wanted to remake America. And that establishment, the military-industrial complex in corporate America, still exists today and they still feel threatened by King's message. Beyond a, a civil rights crusader, Martin Luther King Jr. fought against wealth inequality, and he fought for the rights of workers to unionize. In fact, that was his mission on the day he was assassinated in Memphis. He was there in support of sanitation workers who were on strike in that city. As the right continues their war against unions across our country and advances policies that help the Koch brothers get rich but leave the middle class in debt, King's dream still has not been realized. King was also one of the most outspoken critics of the Vietnam War, a war that was just as futile as Afghanistan, and a war that was recently surpassed by Afghanistan as America's longest military engagement. Don't take my word for it. Take King's words for it. It is time for all people of conscience to call upon America to come back home. Come home, America. I call on Washington today. I call on every man and woman of goodwill all over America today. I call on the young men of America who must make a choice today to take a stand on this issue. Tomorrow may be too late. And don't let anybody make you think that God chose America as his divine messianic force to be a sort of policeman of the whole world, a nation that continues year after year 
to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a dangerous man to the establishment because had he lived, he could have ended the war. He stood up to the military industrial complex that strangles America today. If we take any message from this, from today's MLK Day, we must heed Dr. King's words to call on America to come home.